Welcome to Zion's Palm Sunday worship. As we enter Holy Week, unable to meet together physically, we once again remember the strength that we can have in God's promises to us as we follow our Lord Jesus, whose love brought him all the way to the cross. Just a reminder that during Holy Week, we'll have some special offerings for you each day. On Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we'll have Bible readings and prayers. On Thursday, we'll have Maundy Thursday worship and Friday, Good Friday worship. And then, of course, Easter Sunday, a week from today. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our call to worship response will be simply, Hosanna. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. Hosanna. God's steadfast love endures forever. Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Hosanna. The Lord is our God and has given us light. Hosanna. Great is the Lord who has, and we give thanks to the Lord. Hosanna. Hosanna to the Son of David. Hosanna. Save us, O God. Hosanna. God's steadfast love endures forever. Hosanna. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of transformation, we are reminded this day that Jesus' ride into Jerusalem was more than a show, more than the beginning of a celebration. It was a signal that things are changing, that the world as we know it is becoming the world as it should be. This simple ride reminds us and the whole world that you are indeed coming to make all things new. You are coming to turn weapons of war into instruments of peace. You are coming to release those who find themselves in all manners of bondage, chains of injustice, chains of addiction, chains of conformity and apathy. You are coming to provide for the poor, food for the hungry and shelter for the homeless. You are coming to assure the dignity and equality of all who are marginalized or oppressed. You are coming to end violence and divisions to provide safe communities and opportunities for education. You are coming to offer healing and wholeness, comfort, consolation, and hope. You are coming to transform all that we know. You are coming to save us. Come, gracious God, into a world that longs for change, a world that needs your love, a world full of your own children, a world ripe with hope and potential. Amen. Our first reading for today is from the book of Philippians, and we read from chapter 2. St. Paul writes, Let this same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and has given him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Here ends the reading. Our psalm for today is from Psalm 31. We begin with verse 9 and read through verse 16. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye wastes away from grief my soul and body also. For my life is spent with sorrow and my years with sighing. 
My strength fails because of my misery, and my bones waste away. I am the scorn of all my adversaries, a horror to all my neighbors, an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I have passed out of mind like one who is dead. I have become like a broken vessel, for I hear the whispering of many, terror all around as they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, we'll have the children come. Wherever you are, come for the children's time. Well, good morning, you guys. Today is Palm Sunday, and you'll see the palm leaves that we have around us today, remembering how Jesus came into Jerusalem and he was riding a donkey. Here's kind of a picture that we have of Jesus coming into Jerusalem on a donkey. And I've run along a donkey that I've had since I was a little boy. This blue donkey was one of my favorite toy animals when I was a kid. And I was thinking about this donkey as Palm Sunday came out and how special this donkey was to me. I'm not sure why. Maybe because I only had one donkey and I had lots of cows and horses and pigs. But I've kept this donkey all these years. But you know what? Wouldn't it be fun to see some real donkeys today? Let's take a little field trip and see, get to know some real donkeys. Then I'll meet you back here later. I'm just going to run and change clothes, but it won't take long. See you out with the donkeys. Hey guys. So here we are. This is Bunny and Amy Lou. And we have Cricket too, who's not in the picture right now, I don't think. And what do you guys think donkeys like to eat? Any ideas? Well, one of the things that they like is bread. So Bunny, you want some bread? Bunny's a funny name for a donkey, right? And maybe Amy Lou wants some bread. Another thing they like is orange peels. How about you, Bunny? You want an orange peel? All righty. Nice. Well, I've been getting to know these two donkeys, plus another donkey named Cricket. And we've been having some fun getting acquainted here. And it's a beautiful day to be outside. And as you can see, these guys are getting kind of used to getting fed by me. So that's fun. These are actually miniature donkeys. They're not full-size donkeys. So when Jesus rode on a donkey into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, he would have been on a little bit bigger donkey. So these donkeys are too small for me to sit on, so I'm not going to do that. But for a lot of you kids, they are big enough to hold you. So as I was thinking about donkeys, donkeys are pretty peaceful animals. Wants to get right, she wants to get right in the bucket with the bread. Okay, that's enough. Donkeys are peaceful animals, and sometimes they're put in even with race horses, really, really fast horses, to kind of keep them more calm down and peaceful. Isn't that kind of neat to know? When Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, he was riding in on a very humble, kind of lowly type animal, and he didn't ride in on a big fat fancy horse or anything like that a donkey is what we call a beast of burden and they just kind of do the work they're supposed to do your cricket you want some bread too Here you go and that tells us something about jesus that he rode into jerusalem on a beast of burden not on a fancy horse showing us that he came to this earth not to be served by others but to serve and as he came in and people said, Hosanna, Hosanna, he was on a donkey. And that was pretty amazing, really, for that time to think of a king of kings being on a donkey. Well, these guys are getting really used to this bread now. And there's something else I want to show you 
and on the donkey's back, each donkey on their back has kind of a cross. And there's a legend of the cross that I'll be telling you about. And um, when we get back to church, I'm going to tell you just a little bit about that, okay? So we'll finish up back at the church. Here we go. Wow, that was really something. I, you know, I learned some things today when I was out with those donkeys. A couple things at least. One is that donkeys like to eat oranges. Did you know that? And I just throw away orange peels. And so I thought, well, I'm going to keep my orange peels for a while and give them to the donkeys when I have some stored up in a bag. So that's one thing I learned about donkeys today. And I also learned that donkeys have a cross on their back. Interesting. Did you notice that cross as we left the donkeys? Now, my donkey doesn't have a cross on its back. And I think I better fix that today. So here goes. We're going to put a cross on this donkey's back so it looks like Bunny and Cricket and Amy Lou. I don't know if you can see that cross that I put on the back of this donkey. There's a story that people began to tell, I don't know, sometime many, many years ago. They're thinking about how Jesus came into Jerusalem riding on that humble donkey. And there was a story that was told about this donkey found his way all the way to the cross. It was so devoted to Jesus and standing in the shadow of the cross with his back to the cross, the cross made a shadow on the donkey's back. And that's how the story uh, developed of how donkeys have a cross on their back. Well, I like the thought of a donkey being uh, that animal that served Jesus by taking him into Jerusalem. That was very, very special. And it showed us how Jesus was so humble that he rode this donkey, that he went into Jerusalem to serve others and to be our Savior as he died on the cross. Shall we pray together? Dear Lord Jesus, dear Lord Jesus, thank you for humbling yourself. Thank you for humbling yourself and riding on a donkey and riding on a donkey into Jerusalem, into Jerusalem. Thank you for dying for us. Thank you for dying for us, for taking our sins upon yourself, for taking our sins upon yourself. Help us, Lord, help us, Lord, to follow your way, to follow your way of serving others, of serving others. Amen. Thanks for coming today, and we'll see you next time. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 21. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt tied with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what the prophet had said. Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd had spread their cloaks on the road. Others had cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest Jerusalem. When Jesus had entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, 
This is the prophet Jesus of Nazareth in Galilee. Here ends the reading of the gospel. It was with mixed emotions that the onlookers cheered, waving homemade signs as the teachers drove by. Within the last few weeks, as many or perhaps all of you have heard, our Stuartville teachers took it upon themselves to spread some positivity and connect with their students while observing this stay at home order by having a parade through town. What a creative example of the kind of outreach that's been happening lately. I've witnessed so much joy and caring expressed in unusual and unconventional ways from hearts and rainbows decorating windows of homes or people playing tic-tac-toe or other games from opposite sides of a front door. Even, I heard one story of a teacher who showed up with a whiteboard outside of his student's home at a safe distance when she was having trouble understanding the assignment with online learning. Despite all this creativity and care, it is certainly challenging to observe the stay-at-home order so I am grateful that our community and the body of Christ remain spiritually together, united as one. Thinking about the mixed emotions of this particular parade helps me to reflect on the complexities of Palm Sunday this year. After all, wouldn't we much rather not have needed this teacher parade in the first place? If it were possible, wouldn't we much prefer that the coronavirus had been stopped in its tracks long before it got to the U.S., long before the death toll climbed around the world? Wouldn't we prefer to have business as usual, worship as usual, school as usual, where our students and teachers could interact face-to-face -face in their classrooms? While I'm certain Many in our community were grateful for the kindness that our Stuartville teachers showed by having this parade. Underneath that gratitude lies something else. Underneath that gratitude lies disappointment that we're experiencing a global pandemic in the first place. Underneath that gratitude lies uncertainty for how long this might go on. Uncertainty for what life will look like after this, and uncertainty of what will change in our lives because of this. Underneath our gratitude lies discomfort, unease, anxiety, and stress. It was with mixed emotions that onlookers cheered, waving signs as the teachers drove by. And I think this can help us understand Palm Sunday a little bit better this year. The scene in the gospel in which Jesus rides on a donkey and a colt simultaneously, somehow. Jesus rides across cloaks spread across the ground in a sort of red carpet as Jesus enters Jerusalem. And waving palms and the cheers of, Hosanna, blessed is he! The scene of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem looks like a celebration, and it is. It looks like a parade. It looks like a crowd gathered in support, in praise, in loving adoration, welcoming Jesus and giving thanks for his loving work in their world. It looks like hope. And to a certain extent, it is all of those things, but it is also so much more than a joyous occasion. Because underneath this ancient parade, underneath the celebration, lies a deep tension. Perhaps this crowd has no idea, but underneath their hosannas lie crucify him to be screamed only a few days later. Underneath their waving palms lie fists, pounding the air with betrayal and scorn. Underneath their loving devotion lies the fear of being found out, 
the fear of being accused and the consequences they might personally suffer for being associated with him. Underneath the praise lies desperation. While the challenges of what we are facing in no way compares with the suffering that awaits Jesus, perhaps we can understand the tension hanging in the air among the cheers as Jesus rides into Jerusalem, the city on the hill, a city that has always been and will always be full of contention, yet full of hope. And perhaps hearing again of Jesus' ride today can give us a window into seeing more clearly what is about to happen here. Jesus' ride was a sign that things are changing, that the world as we know it is becoming the world as it should be. Now, if that sounds both like a challenge and a comfort to you, then you are paying attention. Even for people who say they like change, change is always a challenge. Because even good change means that not only will things change around me, but it means that I will be required to change too. Change is always hard because it includes loss which means that we must grieve. And that's always complicated and hard. But if we can grieve in a way that both acknowledges what is lost and makes space for the possibility that what is about to be might also be good, different, but good, then it is possible to move through change with openness and cooperation. Of course, when we're less open to change, we can be defensive and downright resistant, which makes change challenging, even painful. But perhaps when the change that Jesus is bringing means that the world is becoming more as it should be, that means God's love is prevailing, that God's love is transforming each of us and all of us. And isn't that something to celebrate. So I hope that can stir up some hope in Jesus' work, some peace to trust in God's will, and some patience to see what God is unfolding among us. Dear friends in Christ, that is my prayer for you and for me today, that we, myself included, can refrain from digging in our heels when the Spirit's winds of change blow among us, that we can trust in this time of change that God's love in Jesus Christ is shaping the world into more of what it should be, a world of restorative justice, a world of steadfast love that knows no bounds. And in between our hosannas and our crucify hymns, may we attempt to be patient to look for the signs of what God is up to, how God is shaping the world into more of what it should be, even if we don't know what that looks like just yet. And to sustain you in your hope in this waiting, allow me to offer a few glimpses of what I see, perhaps how God is shaping the world anew. I believe that we are already seeing in this time that we actually can listen to our global neighbors and learn from one another. Not perfectly, or perhaps as swiftly as possible, but we can. I believe we are also already seeing that we, as the nations of God's creation, can actually unite around the good of all rather than prioritize our own individual desires above the whole. I believe that despite the number of times we have seen elsewise, we are already seeing that it is possible to function in a way that race, class, wealth, gender, and orientation and age are not ultimately divisive. To function in such a way that sees the image of God in all people, 
and respects the inherent humanity of each and every person. While I do not believe in any way that a global pandemic is somehow God's instrument of choice to accomplish this work, I do believe that God has worked for good in much stranger situations, in much more dire circumstances, with much less. And so I am confident of God's work now, in this time, to shape the world more and more according to God's mercy, more according to God's justice. This is what I see. This is what I hear as Jesus rides into Jerusalem, waving palms and cheering Hosannas. So if you found the link on our Facebook page and made your own palm branch today, make sure you have it now. And join me lifting your voices out loud and raise them as we give thanks and praise to God by cheering Hosanna three times. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Amen. Our worship continues with the confession of faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, this is the time of the service that we take our offering. You know, I've been missing that noisy offering these weeks, and I was thinking, you guys could do a noisy offering at home, couldn't you? So you could find some kind of a jar or other container that maybe makes a little noise, and take your offering together at home. That'd be kind of a fun idea. And then you can bring it back to church when we are able to gather again. Another thing that I want you to, let, to let you know about as far as our offering um, is that we are now um, having an option that you can give on your mobile device. And on our Zion website, we'll have a video that Pastor Kim has done explaining how you can make this happen. I'm not going to try to explain it now and take all that time, but make sure you check that out if you'd like to see about the possibility of giving on your mobile device. As always, we thank you for your continued giving through your automated giving and through your envelope giving as well. Thank you so much. We continue with the prayers and once again the congregational response after Lord in your mercy is hear our prayer. As we enter this holy week, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. We pray for your church throughout the world, Lord God, that our sisters and brothers in every land be renewed in the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the fragile gift of creation, that our world's many scars and sufferings find healing in God's mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the nations of the world, especially where betrayal and injustice reign and God's children perish by the sword of violence or preventable disease. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in need, for those who are grieved or distressed, lonely or despairing, especially in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic. We pray for those who endure pain on a regular basis, for those battling cancer and other lingering illnesses. And today we especially pray for our friends and members of Zion, Karen, Janice, Sid, Luann, Dave, Oris, Ashley, Clint, Henry, Wyatt, 
Jim, Vicki, Ray, Abby, Donna, Chrissy, Abigail, and Kim. And in the quietness of our own hearts, we bring to you, O Lord, those for whom we are concerned about who need your healing care. We also pray that you would give comfort to those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, especially Holly and her children, Hannah and Grace, on the death of Jake, for Sherry and her family on the death of her father, Ken, for Carl and his family on the death of his wife, Betty. We pray for health care workers, for law enforcement and emergency personnel, for those who work as a part of the food service industry. Watch over students and teachers as learning continues outside the classroom. We pray for wisdom and courage for leaders of our local, state, and national governments. Watch over those who serve our nation in the military, especially Justin, Todd, Zachary, Adam, Christina, Connor, Dylan, Bryce, and Connor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember our partners around the world. O oh God, we pray for Adam and Michelle and their family in Montreal. We pray for the Michelsons and their radio television ministry in Bolivia. We pray for our sister congregation, St. Wanzalea Lutheran Church in Singida, Tanzania, and for our global partners, our Lutheran partners in South Sudan, in Colombia, and the Central Diocese of Tanzania. We pray for all those around the world who are affected by natural disasters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask, O oh God, oh God, that you watch over all who govern in our country and throughout the world. Guide them and give them your wisdom in dealing with through this difficult time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask, O oh God, that you hear our prayers, and now as we join together in praying the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.